Okay, here's another update for where this piece is at. As you can tell, there's uh, the color has changed on this quite a bit. Been going through and putting the color layers on everything. So, from where I left off last, these are the foam blocks, and these have actually been painted uh, red. If you can see that, and then to kind of make them look like a give them more of a brick look. Uh, and then some stipples with a good different couple different color reds to give them different shades, things like that. And then just some dry brushes on uh, the rock and sand and pebbles. Again, just subtle differences of so different shades of, of tans and browns. Uh, really taking out to a chocolate brown uh, as a, as a base layer to this. And then again, dry brushing stuff up. Uh, the glossier surface there is I just did this with a real heavy. Uh, homemade wash and then just to kind of mute some of the the brick colors things like that for things to just get into the, the little crevices and that kind of stuff so you can see you know as it it just mutes some of the tones gets into the little odd areas and, and blends things together uh, and then the little pieces of vine uh, I may then try to hit that with another muted green that was probably a little brighter it's still coming out brighter than I thought but I may hit that with a, a, a heavy black wash to, to knock it down some more. And again, just, just a little bit of color so that this thing just didn't look like a big you know, drab blob. That was the, my big concern with this is it was all just going to be a monotone color. So uh, again, then here's the piece to this one. Do this as I wreck the door. Uh, chewed it up. Looks like it's you know, gotten torn off its hinges. Uh, and again, painting some of the brickwork on the side, uh, and then just making again this base blend in so it, it carries a lot of the same colors, and it just makes it a little bit more substantial piece without adding a lot of complication to it. Uh, again, here's how it kind of goes into the inside of it. And as you get some of the ambient light, you can see uh, it just puts there's a couple pieces of foam in there just to finish it out because of the the inside of the cave, if you will doesn't have it just has a lot of the kind of the reverse of the details so uh, I've just added again some blocks of foam in here to make it look like the the walls are just uh, you know just hunked out that kind of stuff so uh, and again just to make it look like it uh, is actually a, you know, a cave entrance a little bit and then what I've also done is I've got taken the box that this thing came with it has some figures for this board game and so a couple of the figures are actually skeletons so what I've done is taken a couple of the skeletons let's see if you can see them here and turn them into instead of being figures they were holding swords I've made this one into a noose out of wire and then I've just been putting some shades on them to, to give the the bone a warm look because it was just this really plain ugly plastic and so I'm gonna hang him not quite sure yet where I'm gonna hang him but uh, he may end up going from uh, this piece here I may end up hanging him from uh, the center here so he'd just be hanging, hanging in the middle of this um, so that's probably where he's gonna go but I haven't made the final decision and then I got one more guy that I made him into a uh, sitting position, so I can get some better light on him. And I'm going to put him inside you know, the cave and have him propped up against the wall and just have him just sitting there. So again, just a little bit of, you know, just one of those little, those little pieces that make it look uh, different. Just give it a little, a little character and. Uh, that's probably, uh, I'm thinking about doing one or two more details maybe up top and the biggest piece is potentially adding some uh, some banners here and here uh, just to give it again another little little, little more accent to it. Uh, it came with some, some banners, there are some inexpensive stickers on them so I may just redo my, uh, you know, my cardboard backing that kind of stuff or I may actually just use uh, ones that I've already got created that I had left over, you know, these are kind of generic and they kind of fit the color scheme. So these might just get 
mounted up in here to give it uh, to give it a look. So getting close. Just uh, once this dries and the wash on here dries up, uh, need to let it. Uh, you know, like I said, get its time to cure. Then I will hit it with uh, hit it with a hit it with a nice heavy matte coat. Probably put some uh, pigment powders and stuff on the on the ground stuff here just again to give it uh, a little more character. Uh, I'm debating on whether or not to put any plants on this. Mostly there's two reasons why. One is I kept this nudge pretty narrow. It's enough to fit models but if I start putting bushes on here it essentially pushes stuff off. Uh, I may put some around on the cave side in here maybe on the front and I may put some vines uh, let's see right here. Uh, I may put some vines let's say crawling up this you know, on this side here to give it some some pieces and maybe maybe come up with some vines hanging down to just hide this hard this hard edge and hide it. Maybe that'll that might be a way to do this. Uh, but again, my problem here is if I have hanging stuff and people want to play and they put miniatures in here, it's just one of those things, and that a lot of that stuff is going to be pretty fragile and it will just it'll just get torn off really easy. So. Um, it's a balance between how realistic do you want it to look and how playable. So they may just be vines clinging to the to this portion of it just to give it a again just a little bit of color uh, to break things up. So hopefully in another week I should have this thing done and then throw it on a gaming table and start getting some playing use out of it. So there you go.